and welcome back. Now we'll talk about Chapter 4 of the DPDP app and how we can map it to any organization needs. Chapter 4 is very instrumental in defining the core principles of data processing. This chapter describes the guidelines for transferring personal data outside India. It also outlines the exemptions for specific data processing and also specifies the compliance and requirements, particularly in startups. Okay, so let's talk about section 16. Section 16 is about restricting transfer of personal data outside India. So for this, first we need to evaluate data transfer requirements where we have to conduct a comprehensive assessment to determine and document the necessity and scope of transferring personal data outside India. For example, companies like IBM, Wipro, etc. evaluates data transfer needs by analyzing its international operations and also ensures that the personal data is sent to its global headquarters, which is necessary for business operations to comply with local regulations. Second, monitor government notifications. So over here we need to establish a systematic approach to stay updated with the notifications issued by the central government regarding that any countries or territories where data transfer is restricted. For example, companies like IBM, Wipro, etc. sets up a compliance team that regularly review updates from the Indian government to ensure it does not transfer data to newly restricted countries, avoiding any potential regulatory issues. Third, comply with higher standards. So here we need to ensure adherence to any higher standards of data protection or additional restrictions imposed by any other applicable law, recognizing that the section 16 subsection 2, which is to monitor government notification, maintains the validity of such regulations. For example, companies like Wipro, IBM implement GDPR compliant measures for data transfers to Europe, even though Indian regulations may not impose such stringent requirements, ensuring it meets the highest data protection standards. So let's talk about section 17, which is exemptions for specific data processing activities. First one being, we need to identify eligible exemptions, where we have to review and catalog data processing activities to a certain eligibility for exemptions under this clause, ensuring that such processing aligns with the stipulated purposes. For example, banks like HDFC, ICICI Bank identifies that its processing of data for detecting and preventing financial fraud qualifies for exemptions under this clause, thus ensuring its fraud prevention measures are legally compliant. Second, document exemption criteria. For processing under the interest of sovereignty, security or public order, we need to meticulously document the reasons and justifications for claiming such exemptions, maintaining transparency and accountability. For example, Delhi Police, Mumbai Police, etc. documents its data processing activities related to public safety and national security ensuring that it meets its criteria under this clause and maintains transparency in its operation. Third, monitor exemption notifications. So here we need to regularly monitor notifications from the central government that specify exemptions applicable to startups or other data fiduciaries, adjusting compliance strategies accordingly. For example, an XYZ company is a startup that regularly checks for updates from the central government to ensure that it benefits from any applicable exemptions while staying compliant with the other DPDP Act provisions. Fourth, assess impact on data principles. Here we need to evaluate data processing activities conducted by the state to ensure they do not adversely affect the rights or interest of the data principles. For example, NHS. Now, NHS is the National Health Service of India. They ensure that its data processing activities for public health initiatives does not negatively impact patients' rights thus following the requirements of this clause. Fifth, monitor government notifications. So here we have to stay vigilant for any temporary exemptions granted by the central government, understanding their scope and duration to ensure timely compliance adjustments. For example, like Reliance Industries, monitors government notifications for any temporary exemptions to adjust its data handling practices accordingly and stay compliant with the latest regulatory changes. Okay, so let's talk about section 17, subsection 3, where, where we have to ensure compliance for startups. So here first we have to understand the startup criteria. We have to verify that the organization meets the criteria for being recognized as a startup under the central government's notifications and definitions. For example, Zomato. So Zomato verifies its status as a startup under the central government 
because it can take advantage of any relevant exemptions while ensuring its data practices align with the DBDP Act. Second, monitor government notifications. So here we have to continuously monitor for any government notifications that detail exemptions for applicable startups, staying informed of any changes or updates. For example, OYO rooms. So OYO rooms sets a system for tracking government notifications on data protection exemptions that apply to startups, adapting to its policies as necessary. Third, prepare for compliance. So while taking the advantage of exemptions, we also have to proactively comply to the other remaining provisions of this act thereby maintaining a robust data protection framework and also fostering trust among the stakeholders. For example, XYZ company is a startup. So the startup leverages exemptions, but also simultaneously develops comprehensive data protection policies to comply with the DPDB Act requirements and build trust with the customers. In conclusion, in mapping the Chapter 4 of the DPDB Act and compliance with this Act is not merely a legal obligation, but also means to foster trust and accountability in data processing activities. Thank you for watching.